my lovely, it's Rambo here again from Kickback Garage. Today, we're going to do a bit of body work, so go grab that coffee and I'll see you after the intro. <laughs> Messing around with these cameras, battery is going flat. I'm a cat of the merang, all the sprung in log of villa come under talk. In your novice back out to other forty frog, for what to do or draw. Can we phone, can I send and come at the house and took over so we are the brother last summer? Right, I'm uh, messing around with the uh, Lambretta today. I really need to get these uh, footboards sorted, ready for paint. Now, my paint is head. I have to be really careful and try not to take off too much paint. But uh, I think he's going to be a little bit upset with me. Um, and it's probably going to cost me a small fortune to get this uh, painted. But the, because the thing is, there's quite a lot of uh, filler in here. There's some dents and there's some filler. So uh, what I'm doing uh, at the moment is I am, um, I've been sorting out some dents. I think I might have to bring you down or closer. I think uh, maybe both. Or can I jack up my, jack up my bench? Jack it up, jack it up, jack it up. Right, the great thing about this light of mine is you can really see bumps and indentations. Now, one of the problems with uh, the Lambretta Leg Shield, especially Series 2, uh, yeah, and series one because of the fact that you've got three uh, of those special nuts that fit the uh, floorboards and the, and the uh, mudguard with is if you tighten the screws too tight then you end up with this can you see that there's like quite an indentation there now I've already beaten out the uh, the two here and the three on the other side but I thought I'd save this one for you and obviously once I'm filming I won't be able to. Uh, I won't be able to get it right as quite as good as I did the other two. <laughs> That's so slow for you. But uh, what I do is I just use the old panel hammer and one of these uh, curvy, curvy curvatures, and I just fit it on the back side here. Just have to find a a place that looks good, and I just give it some gentle, gentle taps. I'm not hitting it hard, it's slowly going away. It's worse on this edge here, I think. So I'm gonna have to put that there and uh, try and tap that in. And I'm not I'm not hitting it square square on, I'm not sort of giving it a bit of a stroke as I'm uh, as I'm working on it. It's getting there, you can see the bumps going, but now I'm using a square edge just to get rid of these, uh, just get, uh, the thing is it's been pulled in on the back side there a little bit, so I'm going to have to hit it a little bit harder. I really am hoping you can see this, I'm going to have to do some zoomy zoomy stuff, it's just right on the edge here, but that is looking better already. Just have to... And this is the one that you see. That's actually not too bad. It goes out a little bit here and then in. A bit more. Yeah, that looks pretty good, that does. Nice one. Another thing I've been trying to sort out is uh, my rubbers have been ill-fitting around this area here. And I can see why, because there's quite a bit of uh, filler on, on this, so what, what I'm gonna have to do really is remove the uh, remove the filler and see if I can uh, straighten out that before I weld up that hole. It's, uh, I'm not sure what they've done. I think they were brutal in 1960 something when they drilled a hole for that. Um, another thing that's, uh, that's a bit of a problem child on this leg shield is the, um, it's the bead for the rubbers. 
that has, for some strange reason, it's been splayed out a little bit. So I've been, I've just been carefully um, knocking that in, knocking that straight. Uh, normally, if this was a real mesh, you can uh, you can take a uh, vice grip and you can weld on a bit of uh, round bar and a bit of flat bar, and you can you can actually crimp uh, the corners. But this isn't too bad. Uh, like I said, the only problem is it was splayed out a bit. Now I have worked with it, so it is pretty straight up here. But I see there's still a couple of kinks, and then I use this uh, square block of mine, just put it on the back side there and try and get out the kinks. That's looking really nice and straight actually. Nice one. And I'll uh, do the same on the other side, but first I'm going to have to remove the paint around here. And that means I have to turn on my uh, noisy um, compressor. Right, I sanded that down with my uh, little uh, what's my jig and um, my little mini sander. And when I run my fingers over here, I can feel actually there's a round indentation around that hole. So it, there's been some sort of bracket or something that's been uh, put on there. So that needs to be uh, pushed out a little bit there. And I think I could, uh, I think I can do that just by a little gentle tapping, I can actually feel it. You can, you can hear the difference, that's the thing. What I'm listening for is the difference between when I tap it, you get the metal, the metal sound of the leg shield vibrating, and then you suddenly get like a thunk, and then you know that the uh, metal has uh, made contact with, uh, with this uh, bit of, steel I've got there's there's a tiny there's sort of a ridge there see if I can get that out there you can hear it there smack there don't go to town or you'll end up pushing it back here uh, in the opposite direction. That feels... That feels quite good. Just a tiny, tiny bit on the top of the hole there. Down. Nice, I'm actually quite pleased with that. The only, the only bit of uh, dent I've got now, it feels quite smooth, is uh, where it meets the paint. I think there's some, there's some filler there as well, but I'm, I really I got told by my uh, painter to uh, take off as little paint as possible. I think he's gonna, yeah. I think we really want, just wanna mat it down and paint over it, but I, obviously gonna have to put some filler there. Anyway, I can't paint, that's not my, deal but this this side looks pretty good I think uh, I have to remove the uh, leg shield because uh, on the other side I'll show you if we move round on to the side <laughs> do I have to do some zoomy zoomy stuff on this edge here it's worse so I'm gonna obviously gonna have to do the uh, the dolly dolly and hammer bit here, but this corner is actually missing. There is a little split here, and you can see this is not looking too clever. There's a, a dent here which should really have been sorted out. Should really have been sorted out last time it was painted. I think I'm gonna to have to uh, take off the leg shield and put it on the ground, put the block underneath or may maybe even a wooden block and I'll use a, a smaller hammer to get out. There's like an indentation there and it doesn't look like it's been, uh, it's been uh, had any, got any filler in it either. 
And if you're doing this at home, do not, <laughs> do not weld on your machine with all your electrics still plugged in. I have taken out my CDI um, and taken off the earths because there's quite a lot of voltage that goes through, uh, <laughs> goes through a welder. So I'm gonna uh, dress up in fancy dress and see if I can weld some of these uh, holes up. All right, so when you weld up holes, it's really important that you uh, hold some uh, copper on the back side of the hole. Um, that lets you uh, blend, in, blend in the new metal with the old metal. Um, and you, you sort of start at an edge and uh, work your way over, slowly, slowly. Especially on so thin panel that we do now. Problem is, I haven't got copper. So uh, what I've been using is uh, this, which is a uh, poor man's alternative. It's uh, brass. And uh, it doesn't do quite as good a job as uh, copper, but it does the job. <laughs> Regularly, uh, that is about as good as I can get it. Now, uh, I have uh, welded up all these holes and I've uh, used my little grinder, my mini grinder, to uh, flatten it back out again. Um, some of the holes went well, some of them didn't. Um, the split on the corner here, what I ended up doing is um, building up a bead on the back side there just to strengthen it a little bit and then uh, reshape it this is fine the edge I managed to uh, straighten this edge here I um, what did I do yeah I used a smaller hammer and that flat bit of metal I've got on the on the back side there I've got most of it out there's a tiny tiny bit there but I'm pretty sure my welder will be able to sort that out um, my welder my painter <laughs> So he, uh, he'll have to use a little bit of the old uh, filler there. But uh, all in all, I'm pretty pleased with that. It's, uh, it went quite well. As you can see, got the holes welded up here and here. Um, what I did was I welded them up on the other side, the opposite side, because um, if you get a blowout or anything like that, it ends up on this side. Now, obviously this bit here, is not be, gonna be seen. So he doesn't have to mess around with that too much. Um, I had a split on the top here. I did the same there. I welded it on the, uh, on the underside there so that you can't see it on the outside. And I had a corner split here. Unfortunately, it blew, <laughs> blew out a little bit of metal, but that's, that's sort of hidden by the uh, chrome ring. So that's not too bad. The badges are on. Um, ended up welding up if I can get it off, I'm, I'm losing, I'm dropping my leg shields, which would be fun. Bend my leg shields while I'm showing you. If I can get this out again. It's quite a tight hole, actually. Ah, come on. There we go. So I uh, ended up, put those away somewhere, Rob, so I don't lose them. There. Um, so what I have to do now is, and I'm not going to film this, is I have bought a, um, a splash plate because I've never had splash plates on my scooters and the engines get quite dirty. So I, I decided to fit a splash plate on that. I, I had a test fit with my Avanti Xbox ST and it fits fine. So I bought a Casser item. Let me just get that. So I've got this. Splash plate, and I bought a new Casa Lambretta uh, number plate holding uh, bracket. Uh, what I'm going to do with these, I think they powder coated or something, but I'm just going to mat these down, so this should be really easy for the, my painter to throw some paint on. I'm going to take off my tool uh, toolbox door, um, and uh, he's going to paint that as well and uh, my headset top. Now, what I have to do now is uh, mat it all down as, uh, as smooth as I can get it. And he's gonna have to work a little bit with this actually, but uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, my painter. I'm sure he'll charge me, but uh, that should be good. And now it's down to the sanding and that is uh, boring as hell and very, very messy. So, um, I'll uh, hopefully, by the time I do the next video, we should be uh, 
cooking on gas and this should be uh, ready to fit. Another thing I've done is uh, I've tacked this little JB fabrication bracket, reinforcement bracket to the frame here. I've got a mate of mine who's a proper welder. He's gonna come up during the week and he's gonna weld that properly in place. That's basically because <laughs> I've got some um, worries that uh, it might start cracking here because I've got quite a powerful engine, although it's not the most powerful in the world. Um, I've seen a few frames where uh, this piece here sort of cracks at the weld after uh, many years of use and abuse. So while I've got the uh, petrol tank out because I had to take that out to fit the uh, fuel tap, I decided to fit this. Uh, I bought this pff, yeah, probably about a year and a half ago, but uh, I've decided to fit it. So I'll, he'll be coming up here next week to do that. Right, another thing that I've done is uh, change the silent blocks. I've now fit the uh, BGM silent blocks, uh, replaced them. As you can see here, these are my old uh, Castle Performance ones. I, I find these a little bit stiff. Like if I jump between, if I jump between the Series One and the Series Two, these are a bit more vibratory. But they're starting to loosen the rubber on the edge here. So it was about time that I changed those. I was actually going to change them last year, but it is a pain to take the engine out just to change those when there's nothing wrong with the engine. But because I had to have the engine out anyway because of the welding, then uh, yeah, so it's there, I've done that. I'm also going to um, take off the rear hub and map that down, send that over to my painter, which uh, should be really cool. So I reckon uh, the scooter's gonna look really nice and I need to give this engine a, a proper wash. It's really dirty. So uh, hopefully when I fit the splash plate, that should uh, help a little bit. Uh, next video is <laughs> just gonna be a fun one. I am gonna have a bit of a competition with myself. My uh, rear wheel is worn. I probably could get some more life out of there. It's right down to the wear mark there on the rear wheel. But uh, yeah, there's no point really because um, I don't want to, I don't, really don't like changing these, uh, <laughs> these things. So I'm going to do that now in the winter while I've got time. Um, so the next video, like I said, it's going to be a bit of a competition where I uh, show you how fast I can change the tire, hopefully. The last one that I did, I changed in about three minutes flat. So that's going to be really interesting. The only thing that uh, is stopping me from uh, making that video here and now, apart from the fact that I'm really tired after a long day in the garage, um, is the fact that I need to uh, borrow my mate's uh, bead breaker to get this uh, tire off. So we'll, uh, we'll have a go at that. And a uh, tiny update on the BSA. This is the carb, I've completely stripped it, taken out all the uh, jets. They were manky, really, really terrible. Um, it was like this, lots of green stuff. I mean, look at, this is the float valve. Look at that, it looks horrible. It's like it's completely, yeah, corroded. And I can't really, I don't really want to uh, clean these up and uh, mess around with that. So I've just bought a complete set of uh, jets uh, so that hopefully I shall be able to uh, put those in my big Deloto carb and start up the uh, BSA pretty soon as well, before Christmas, hopefully, because uh, I don't want to do a thing to that bike until I uh, find out how, uh, how she runs and how she rides. Now, the snort side at the moment, but we do get... Uh, a week now and then if we're really lucky where I can actually take the bike out and uh, just just to test uh, how it goes. Anyway, I'll love you and leave you. Let me just touch my screen there because, uh, there we go. <laughs> the thing is, I've got a forward facing screen and if I can't see myself, then I think that the camera isn't working. <laughs> so that's why you'll see me in the videos touching the back of the screen. Uh, it's because of that. So I love you and leave you. A couple more videos before Christmas, hopefully. Uh, yeah, definitely. Two videos before Christmas. I uh, love you and leave you. If you want to support the channel, don't forget, do the old uh, subscribe. You can buy me, me a coffee. You can buy some merch. I'm really, really knackered. I'm, I'm, now I'm going to go. I'm going to stop babbling. And I'll see you all later. ta -ra.